Now on the Pet Cemetery here, this is probably one of the saddest fucking movies I've ever seen. This movie is like so depressing, it is unbelievable. Whenever I want to feel like really depressed or really down on myself, I always pop this movie in. This is a wonderful film though. Uh, I mean, I really love this film, but yes, it, it is such a depressing film. Uh, like when the uh, uh, the father's son gets hit by a truck, Miko Hughes gets ran over by a semi. Uh, it just like shows flashes, like pictures of them when they were when he had him when he was a even younger, like when he was a little baby. Are you a littler baby? I guess. Uh, just that right there just tells you that that this movie right here pulls no punches, and this movie has a depressing ending as well. Um. <clears throat> One thing, though, that's a little weak about the film, well, it's not really a big deal. This is more like a nitpick, is that the song at the end by the Ramones, I actually don't mind. I think it's kind of a funny song, but when it just pops in at the end of it, where it's like, I don't want to be buried in the pet cemetery. Just, it's a silly, it's just a silly sounding song. Uh, that doesn't feel appropriate to me for this movie and it being like such a dark, serious film. I don't know. It's still a great song, and it is a fun song, and I do enjoy it. Just it popping up like right at the end of the film like that, just, I don't know, it just feels kind of like a, I guess it's in there just to have a little bit of breath of fun after such a fucking depressing ride of a, of a film. But uh, I don't know, I just would have liked it to have had something more darker pop up at least first for the first song. But anyway, as the film as a whole, this is a really great, terrific film. It's one of the best Stephen King adaptations. I really love this film. Uh, I believe the Wendigo was actually in the book. I would have liked to have seen the Wendigo in the movie. I was a little disappointed in that. Um, anything else? Uh, there's a slight hole in the film. When his son comes back to life and is trying to kill him, his son looks like perfectly normal even though he got ran over by a semi. Uh, I know they probably did that so him killing people would have more emotional value to it. Of him, you know, looking like the little kid and that he used to be but now being really evil. Uh, but either way, I still would have kind of, I still would have liked it better if he would have had like some really freaky stitches in his face or something at least. That way he would have seemed like, you know, he did get hit by the semi. It just seems like a little, it just seems unbelievable that he would look perfectly normal. And it is. But either way, uh, just that little, but on that little nitpick there, this film is still terrific. It's so depressing. Anytime I want to feel like shit, I just watch this movie. Because this movie will definitely depress you. Um, but it's still a terrific film. And all in all, not all horror movies are meant to be uplifting or have a happy ending to them. And this film certainly does it. And this is definitely a film uh, that is meant to be serious and is serious. Um, and, will, is, is, uh, and will go down in history, in my opinion, as one of the most depressing films I have ever seen. Because not only does his son die in the film, but we also get his wife dead and his, even his fucking cat dies. <laughs> Uh, this film has one character in it who is so damn scary. I nearly shit my pants every time I watch this film alone by myself at night time. Uh, the character in this film, Zelda, uh, is supposed to be a woman, but I actually think that she was at, the character was actually played by a man. But uh, that character is scary as shit, and that is easily the scariest thing in this film, in my opinion. And if you want nightmares, uh, watch this film at home alone in the middle of the night with all the lights off. And once it gets up to that scene... Uh, I guarantee you, you're going to be shitting your pants, at least a little. Now on to Phantasm. Uh, I guess this film would be classified as a, as a sci-fi horror. But for me, I honestly classify this film in a genre uh, of mindfuck. That's where I'd like to classify this film in the mindfuck genre. That's exactly what this film is, a complete mindfuck. I've heard that the original cut of this film was like, what, something like eight, eight hours or four hours long or something like that. Uh, I would love to see that. I would love to see someone take the, if they have the footage, the rest of the footage that was cut out of this film, and to take that fucking shit and put it back into this film, I would love to see that extended version. Uh, I'm a big fan of this movie, and so I would love to see that extended version. I really like this movie. This one, this Phantasm 1 and Phantasm 2 are my two favorite Phantasm films. I think 3 is okay, and I think, uh, well, I think, I think 4 is just, like, dull. I think 4 is just really dull. Uh, 4 is the weakest film in the franchise to me. Because even though 3 gets a little bit too goofy, uh, 4 just doesn't really have anything in it and just feels like a repeat of the same old shit that we've come to know in the franchise. But as far as like this first film goes, this film is great. Just It's such a unique idea is what I love about it. A fucking like mortician from an alternate dimension who's like harvesting dead bodies and making them into dwarves. It fucking uh, has an army of like silver spears. That fly into people. That's such a unique idea. I'm a big fan of Don Coscarelli. 
Uh, I don't feel like he actually directs enough. I don't. I would like for him to direct more. I love this film, and I love Bubba Hotep as well. Uh, I wish he would do more stuff. I don't feel like he's done enough, but what he has done is really good. So I guess I'd rather him do some really just a small amount of really good stuff instead of like a lot of stuff, but only some of it being good, but most being shitty. I would rather him just do a small amount of a lot of good stuff, I guess. But um, not saying that if he made more movies, that'd be bad because he's obviously a director with a lot of talent and a, a lot of creative ideas, which is why I would like to see more from him. But you never know. But either way, just to focus on this film, this is a really great film. It has a great score to it, and the tall man is a terrific villain. Uh, I don't really need to say more than Angus Scrim is the bomb in this movie. Just his lines, you play a good game, boy, but now you die. Just just that right there automatically. That scores hard gold for me. Just the perfect line. He's terrific in the film. Uh, Reggie Bannister is terrific in the film. Everybody's great in the film. Um, I love Reggie, the fucking hero ice cream man. Um, and Mike as well. They're all fine in the film. I won't get in too much with this film because I do want to review the Phantasm, the Phantasm series sometime soon down the line. Uh, but just to... To finish this here, I love Phantasm 1. I think it's a great film. Phantasm 2, I think, is a, a good sequel. Phantasm 3, I think, is an okay film. Phantasm 4 is just dull as fuck to me. Uh, I really don't mind, though, the ending of Phantasm 4 that much. Uh, but um, I, th I still think it leaves a lot to be desired It have it have when it's supposed to be the final of the franchise. I would really love to see a Phantasm 5. I don't really know why we haven't gotten one yet. Maybe it's just he. Maybe Don's just having trouble coming up with a really good idea for another film, uh, or maybe he just can't come up with an idea for another film. Which, if that's true, then that's fine. I mean, four movies is enough, but I just feel like we never got the final we really deserved for this franchise, because the original script for Part Four was Phantasm's End and featured Bruce Campbell. Uh, I believe that was the original script for Four. It might have been Three, but that would have been great. I would have loved to have seen that film. According to the script, it was supposed to be a like really epic ending for Phantasm. Uh, I would have loved to have seen that way more than Phantasm 4, but money talks and bullshit walks, and they couldn't get the financing for it, so we got what we got. But either way, uh, just the original film on its own, in my opinion, is a horror classic and a terrific film, and I say fans of sci-fi, check it out. I say fans of uh, horror, check it out. But the only little, other little minor, minor gripe of this film I got is that the little dwarves in it do look like little rip-offs of the characters from Star Wars. That's just me... Well, that's not really just me. I've heard other people state that too, but they really do resemble too much the, the ones from Star Wars. But other than that, this is a terrific film, and I highly recommend this film. Uh, and I, don't forget to check out Phantasm 2, baby. The ball is back. I'm going to jump in with Psycho 2 here. This is easily one of my favorite sequels of all time. I love this film. Unlike the first film, this film is told straight up from Norman Bates' point of view. Uh... This is just such a terrific film. I even hate to spoil this film just for anybody who's never seen it, but chances are if you're watching this video, then you probably have seen the movie. This movie is unique in the fact that Norman Bates isn't even the killer in this film, as you find out at the end. This is a terrific film. I love this film. I really can't stress uh, how much how, enough how enjoyable this film is. It's just so unique. I just like the idea of it. It's played so well. And Jennifer Tilly's sister, Meg Tilly, is in this film. And uh, she she is she does good in the film. I like her as an actress, and I think she does good in this film. Um, opposite Anthony Perkins, Anthony Perkins really rocks the house in this film. This film is completely his show. He totally rules this film. Pretty much after the first movie, he's now let out of the institution. And like the sister of the of uh, Marion Crane from the first movie is like uh, trying to drive him crazy again, so he'll get locked up. But somebody's killing people like the like at the Bates Motel. Like at the same time, but you don't know what's Norman Bates doing it, like if he's going crazy again. And it makes you feel really sympathetic for him just because he is trying to get his life back together. And it makes you really care about him as a character. And at the end of the film, uh, the, uh, the film keeps you guessing on who's actually doing the killing. But by the end of the film, uh, it has a really fun twist where you find out it's actually uh, Mrs. Spool. Uh, I just love this film. Um, Norman Bates isn't even the killer in the film, which is another thing I thought was actually really cool. And a really cool change, if you're going to do a sequel to Psycho, which is, in my opinion, one of the greatest horror films ever made, you're going to have to come up with something unique and different. And I think this film is different and unique enough to definitely stand on its own. The only little gripes I have with it is some of the death scenes are a little bit too, like, gory, too slasher movie-ish for, a, for, a for, for this franchise, I think, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but other than that, 
Um, this is a terrific film, and I recommend any fan of the first movie. Uh, if you think that a sequel won't uh, be as good as the first movie, uh, no, this film is is not as good as the first movie, but I do think it's extremely close. But the first movie is the superior film. But this film is still really good and is a by far worthy sequel and definitely deserves to be checked out uh, by any fan of the first movie. And like I said, if you don't think that a sequel will hold up that well compared to the first movie, then I think you should definitely give this film a shot anyway because, in my opinion, this is one of the best horror sequels ever made. Now with the prophecy here comes one of my favorite Christopher Walken per, uh, roles and performances. I just love him in this film. He cracks me up. This film ranks on my list just because uh, I think it's a... a a cool idea, just the idea of like a you know a group of uh, like a, a different groups of angels in the in the middle of a war you know, and like fighting it out on Earth is a, is an interesting idea, and just like having Christopher Walken added into it cranks it up that extra that extra couple of yards. Uh, this is a really fun movie, just with Christopher Walken's performance in it alone. Viggo Mortensen plays a really uh, devilish, uh, devilishly evil version of Satan. Uh, he's probably one of the top three devils ever put on screen and movie wise. Uh, he's really entertaining. Um, his performance alone is worth seeing in this film. But Christopher Walken's performance steals the show for me. He's just hilarious when he wants to be and very charismatic when he, uh, all the time. Just his lines he gets are so hilarious. Like uh, this movie has Elias Cotes in it. And he has to protect like this little Indian girl. Who is like uh, had a soul put into her by one of the good angels, and the bad angels are like trying to take the soul out of her, uh, so they can use it to like win their war or whatever. Uh, the script is not fleshed out as good as it should be. Some of the ideas aren't explained well enough. Uh, but what we do get in the film is still interesting. By the ideas not explained enough, I mean like how this spirit is going to help them win the war. I mean, I'm not really sure how it's going to help them, or maybe I didn't catch it when I watched the film, but. Either way, Christopher Walken more than makes up for it. He's so entertaining. Just the lines he gets, like uh, he's talking to Elias Cotes, and he's like, "Oh, you gotta come, to, you gotta come walk for me upstairs. You'll love it. You get, you, you know what those you when they go to bed, you get to get all the ice cream you want." <laughs> I just love his lines. His lines are so funny. Sorry for my horrible Walken impression, but his lines are just so fucking hilarious. I recommend watching this film for his performance as the angel Gabriel alone. Just his performance alone is uh, is the one of the main reasons to see this. Now here we are with Alfred Hitchcock's crowning achievement, uh, the original Psycho film. Uh, the remake of Psycho is one of the worst remakes I've ever seen, just to get that out there. I despise that movie. I would love to do a rant on that film sometime in the future. So I don't want to uh, talk about how much I hate that movie because I want to save some of the stuff I want to say about it for its own review. But the remake of Psycho, in my opinion, is an abomination to the human race. But for the original film here, this film is a, an amazing horror film and a terrific film and has terrific suspense. Uh, I'm a big Alfred Hitchcock fan. Uh, I own a lot of his films on DVD. He's, a, he's a, always been a terrific director in my opinion. This film is no exception. This is his crowning achievement. This is the most popular film he's ever been involved in um, or, or involved with. This film just rules on so many levels. You got Janet Lee at the beginning of the film, uh, who plays Marion Crane, who steals some money and is like uh, fucking uh, heading out and getting the hell out of Dodge. Um, you think she's gonna be the lead, but then she goes to the Bates Motel. People who uh, people who even haven't seen this movie already know what's gonna happen to her. You get the infinite infamous shower scene, which is still epic today. Um, you get some. Uh, well, before I get to that, I'll just go ahead and say, you, and then the film, after she dies, it goes to Norman Bates' point of view, and he kind of becomes the main character. Um, and that's a really cool, like, uh, change right there. I like that. Uh, but you get some, like, old-school style scenes, like, old-school movie-style done scenes, where, like, the detective in the film gets killed, and the way he falls, like, backwards down the steps is, like, in a, is done in a really old-style special effect way. Uh, but it's still, uh, I still... Uh, I mean, it still doesn't bother me, or I don't, uh, or anyone who watches the film that I know of, because it uh, just this film has such a classy uh, feel to it, especially with the black and white. There's just something about black and white films that just feel more classy to me, um, and this film is no exception. So no matter what kind of like effect scene or anything I see in the film, it still looks good with the film, just because of the style the film's done in, and just because of the look of the film. 
Um, and uh, Anthony Perkins, I can't stress enough, is just amazing as Norman Bates. We all go a little mad sometimes. Mother blood. It's just terrific as Norman Bates. Uh, so much better than uh, Vince Vaughn. Uh, sorry about that, but uh, so much better than Vince Vaughn. Um, but yeah, um, or Vince, we won't we won't never mention his name again. But he's terrific. Uh, Anthony Perkins is, and just the ending of this film, uh, just with uh him sitting in his cell and just like the camera closing, uh, cl doing a close up on his face, and that fucking like monologue played over the end of the movie. Uh, where he's uh, where he's like talking in his mother's voice in his mind, and you see him smile, and it's like, I wouldn't even hurt to fly. <laughs> it's just terrific. One of the best endings for a horror film I've ever seen. This is a terrific film. I recommend that anybody who is a movie fan, let alone a horror fan, obviously, should check this film out. In my opinion, this will always be, to me, one of the greatest horror films ever made. Now we're here with Reanimator which is single-handedly my favorite Jeffrey Combs film he's ever done. I also don't really mind the two sequels either. Um, I've always wanted another Reanimator film, but I don't think we're ever going to get one, but I still would really enjoy seeing uh, Jeffrey Combs playing Dr. Herbert West. Uh, I would enjoy seeing him playing like in a hell of Reanimator 5, 6, and 7. As long as he's still playing him and the movies are still fun, fuck it, bring it on. I would love to see it, but I would at least like to see a part 4 sometime in the future, but I don't think we'll ever get one, uh, but I would still love to see one. But as far as this film goes, this film is uh, pretty much a horror comedy. Uh, it's a terrific film. Uh, it's a great film. It's one of my. F it would uh, once again. This is a film that would be in my top, at least my top five uh, favorite horror movies of all time. If this list were in order, I love this film to death. Jeffrey Combs is just the bomb in this film, and just like a fucking other doctor in the film who like loses his head and walks around carrying it to the whole movie, is just hilarious. And the old school style practical effects are much appreciated compared to the new fucking shitty CGI shit of today. Um, I don't really have any gripes with this film uh, at all, really, to be honest. Um, but I haven't, uh, but I haven't seen it in a while. I, I mean, a few months. So I don't really, I don't really remember uh, uh, like any of the little gripes I may have had with it before. So I'd have to watch it, you know, again. To uh, get it f completely fresh in my mind. But from what I remember. I don't remember really any problems with it. Is what I'm saying. But uh, this film is just terrific. Uh, I'm down to the perfect casting of Jeffrey Combs. And uh, just the guy who play I believe it's Bruce Abbott. Who plays his uh, partner in crime in the film. Are just fucking hilarious. Uh, the end of the film. With the big chaos at the morgue. With like all the dead bodies coming to life. And like tearing the, uh, everything all to shit. And they uh they tear uh they tear one of the other undead people like uh, completely apart. It's just a terrific scene. Um, the effects in the film once again work really well. Uh, there's like I said old school effects, but they just shine really well in the film. I definitely recommend buying this film and owning this film. If you're a fan of horror films, I do I hundred percent don't think you'll be disappointed in this film. Uh, if you are, uh, maybe it's just not the type of film for you. I don't know, but uh, I really just don't see how you could be disappointed in this film. Uh, but that's not the, I mean, that's not to say if you don't like the film, you're wrong or anything. If you don't like the film, that's fine. But in my opinion, this is just a terrific film. And this is pretty close to being like the best horror comedy I've ever seen. Uh, and it's got one of the, uh, the greatest scenes in history where the head tries to give head at the end of the film. Which that alone right there automatically ranks this film up to like... Uh, it has to put it. I, you know, I have to put it on my list just for that scene right there, uh, and the coolness of Jeffrey Combs and the fun of the end of it with all the creatures like attacking. Uh, and the end of this film, I love uh, Bruce Abbott's girlfriend dies and he's getting ready to bring her to life and it just the, the screen just goes black and all you can see is the green color and the fucking syringe or the needle, and uh, that's it and it just like goes off there and you can you can see it like. Uh, like the color like disappearing as he's like pressing the needle into her body. Uh, but that, that ending right there is just terrific. This is an amazing film. I haven't seen the two sequels in a long time, but I remember them being pretty decent. But just with this film by itself, this is an amazing film. Uh, I can't praise this film enough, and I definitely think that horror fan or not, I think you'll laugh your ass off at this film just from the sheer creative comedy in it. If you're uh, Just if you enjoy comedy even. I mean, if you don't enjoy horror, if you if you at least enjoy comedy, I think you'll laugh your fucking ass off at this movie. 
just for the head gives head scene alone ah return the living dead i love this film this is uh probably my, in my top three favorite zombie films of all time this film just makes me laugh my ass off but also makes me have a really fun time with it as well this film also is one of those horror films with al with almost uh, well with a completely perfect cast in my opinion um except for maybe the two characters uh i forgot their names uh, the one, the two more useless characters of the punks, the dude who kind of looks like a squire and the girl with the blue in her hair, those two characters, they kind of go off and do their own thing in the movie and they're locked in another building the whole time while most of the other cast is locked in the, the mortuary. I could have done without those two. They don't really get to do much of anything. Uh, you could have cut them out entirely and just focused on the main group where they was and I would have been perfectly happy. But uh, they still don't really hurt the film, but they just seem kind of useless to me. I could have done without them. But as for the film itself, uh, I love. I mean, just to jump back into the film itself here, I love this film. This film is just such a laugh riot. The comedy in it is so funny. Just the, the hilariousness of it with the, the zombies walking around going, brains. Uh, it's just it's, it's fucking gold. And the tar man zombie is hands down. Uh, the best zombie, in my opinion, ever put on film. I love the Tar Man. Um, and the, like I've said, the cast of this film is terrific. From Miguel Nunez, who I like, and Tom Matthews, once again, who I like. And him and James Caron are hilarious in this film. They're always talking about how much pain they're in. They're yelling like 24-7 because they've been exposed to the gas, the trioxin. And they're fucking like screaming all the time. Uh, and just like the constant cursing by the characters in the film is just hilarious. Like, uh, Ernie is, like, talking to Bert, and he's like, oh, Bert, somebody's at the door, and he's like, oh, what the fuck are they doing there? <laughs> it's just the lines in the movie are funny, and they think they can kill the zombies, but, like, uh, by hitting them in the brain, because it's the same thing they did in the movie, Night of the Living Dead, and, uh, they hit it in the brain, and it keeps, uh, it keeps saying brains, and Tom Matthews is like, Tom Matthews keeps saying brains, brains, and then, uh, <laughs> fucking, uh, Clue, uh, uh, uh fucking, I mean, uh, Bert, almost said the actor's real name, but the character Bert, uh, he goes, the brain, the brain, I hit the fucking brain. <laughs> it's so funny. This movie is just full of like great lines and it, uh, just pokes fun at a little bit of a uh, nine living dead. I wouldn't really say it pokes fun at it, but it takes like the ideas of it and uses it as like, kind of like the comedy setup for the film. It takes like the idea of it and uses it as like the comedy set up for the film and plus you get Lene Quigley strip dancing on a fucking tombstone so what more could you ask for in a zombie film than that now we're here at Scream which is one of my favorite Wes Craven films uh this film right here pretty much saved the horror genre which is what well, was, was at like an all-time low at the time this film pretty much revitalized it but it also uh hurt it in a way too because after this film was made and it was such a big hit there were so many copies of this film, so many other films that tried to do the same exact similar style like Urban Legend. And I think Urban Legend sucks ass. That's my opinion on Urban Legend there, just to throw that in there. I fucking hate Urban Legend. But uh, as for this, this film right here, uh, this is a terrific film. I just, uh, I just hate the fact there were so many fucking copies of it. Uh, film, harder, other slasher films trying to do the same exact thing. Uh, this film is terrific though. Uh, I really love this film. From the opening kill with Drew Barrymore being killed to the idea of the killer killing people by asking them horror movie trivia uh, right before he kills them is just a blast. And the cast of this film, uh, this is the film that started like the, the idea, well not so much started the idea, but this is the first, uh, well this, I mean this is the film that uh, did the hip young cast thing and all the copy offs of this film uh, were trying to do the hip young cast thing too, like I know what you did last summer and all the other ones. But this this film right here, I actually think the cast in it is terrific, even though they were, uh, even though they were like you know the hip you know young uh, cast or whatever. They also had Courtney Cox and David Arquette in it as well. And I like David Arquette, and I don't mind Courtney Cox. Um, and Jamie Kennedy is just awesome in this film as like the know-it-all of uh, like uh, horror films. Jamie Kennedy's an actor I think who has good uh, has decent charisma, but he just he's in so many shitty films. It's unbelievable. But this is one of the better ones. He's, this is a really good role for him, and he's great here. He's he's pretty much the best character of the entire franchise. Um, and Nev Campbell is great in this film too. Matthew Lillard and Skeet Yurlich as the two killers in the film are just uh, Matthew Lillard is just hilarious as one of the killers as well. He's he's got like so much energy. Like uh, <laughs> hold on, this one's a screamer. 
just the way he acts, it just cracks me up. And when he's on the phone with like fucking Sydney and she and she's like, uh, Billy's got a motive. What are you gonna tell everybody? And he's like, uh, pure pressure. I'm far too sensitive. Just the lines in this film are funny, and you even get a cameo by Wes Craven himself in the film. This is Metahara done the right way. And I love this film. Uh, none of the sequels, two and three, I really, even though I don't mind them, I really don't think either one of them, even four, which I think is the best sequel, I don't think ever came close to measuring up to this original film right here. Uh, I love this film, and if you're going to watch any meta horror film, I highly recommend the first Scream film. Uh, this film places on my list just because it's so much fun and such a cool idea uh, for its time. Now the idea has been done to death. Uh, and also just because the cast is just terrific in this film. And for me, this will always be uh, the film that helped revitalize the horror genre at the time when it was uh, pretty much in its coffin just waiting for the nail. Uh, and this film really helped bring it back up, and I'll always love it for that. Now on to a film here by my main man, Stanley Kubrick. I'm a big Stanley Kubrick fan. I love 2001 A Space Odyssey, uh, Space Odyssey and Clockwork Orange. I do think this film is not one of his best films. I do think this film falls somewhere in the middle. I still think it's a really terrific film. Some of my little problems with this film is that the first like uh, whole half of the movie and the second act are uh, really creepy and scary and in uh, and have great imagery like the you know elevator full of blood and, sh and that shit. But once Jack Nicholson goes crazy, the movie just becomes more fun and l less scary. Um, but uh, still, at the same time, the main reason to watch this film is Jack Nicholson. And despite the fact that I think the film uh, gets a little bit uh, less scary when he goes crazy. Um, it's still extremely fun to watch just to see him acting crazy. Now, people, uh, people of, of today know that this film has changed completely. Di it's completely different from the book. I mean, um, the book I do think would make a good that would make a good movie, and I do think you could make a good movie out of it. But as that stands, that still doesn't make this film bad. And this is still a terrific film, and I really enjoy this film. And uh, I think Jack Nicholson might get a little bit too over the top. To where it takes uh, some of the scares away, or makes the film a little less scary and makes it more fun, just because he's a little bit too over the top. Like access to the door and looking in and saying, "Here's Johnny," is like the one of the greatest lines in horror cinema and movie cinema period. But it just takes away from like all the great build-up scares and tension from the first two acts of the film for me. Well, it doesn't take it away; it just weakens it a little. But and and it just makes the movie become really fun for me. And also the last shot of seeing like a frozen Jack Nicholson, uh, just looks goofy to me. Just seeing like Jack Nicholson sitting there frozen with a big like a uh, his Jack his just like his Jack Nicholson style face frozen like that just looks funny to me for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, just cause he's it's Jack Nicholson I guess. But other than those two things, this is a terrific film. I love this film. This is easily. Uh, I don't even have to do a review for this film to say that's a four star film out of four. This is an amazing film. I recommend this film to any uh, movie fan or a horror fan. Um, and the, yes, the hedge maze, the hedge maze in the film, I will give it that is much better than the uh, fucking uh, grass animals in the book, the topia uh, animals in the book. Uh, maybe that would, maybe that could work in a film if done the right way, but. Uh, in my opinion, the hedge maze is just a much better idea, or at least for this the style of The Shining, with this more cerebral uh, version of The Shining. But yeah, Jack Nicholson totally makes this film with his performance. Uh, I, I just want to bash your brains in. Just those lines, he's just hilarious in this film. You get the idea, though, that he would he's going to go crazy no matter what. It's just a matter of time, regardless of whether they would have went to a haunted hotel or not. You get the idea that eventually he would have lost his fucking mind and tried to kill his family no matter what regardless of where he was but as this film as it is this is a terrific film with one of jack nicholson's best performances and definitely hit the most fun performance i've ever seen him in maybe tied with the joker from the first tim burton batman film but uh, this film just rocks on all levels it's not the best stanley kubrick film it's somewhere in the middle but horror film wise it is one of the greats now we're here with one of my west craven favorites i've heard some people like to badmouth this film or some people badmouth this film i mean uh, I can understand some of the gripes of this film. Some of the things in it aren't really fleshed out that well. It seems like the film was trying to leave some stuff unanswered so it could have a sequel that never happened. And this is Craven redoing his Elm Street style thing again. But the film still as itself is still really fun. And just like, it is silly, really silly, especially with them going inside the TV and stuff at the end. Uh, like the TV world. But it's still in so much, it's still just a blast to watch. 
this again to me is a popcorn horror movie and Mitch Pileggi as Horace Pinker is just <laughs> he's just the shit as the killer in the film you could he just seems like the guy I mean he seems like a guy that would be able to kick somebody's fucking ass like really easy so you buy that he could like kill a bunch of people you, you get the idea not to fuck with this guy in the movie um, and the whole idea of like jumping from body to body is an idea that's been done a lot of times but still it's done really fun here the like first half of the movie is like a really serious and I can see maybe some people having some problem with how the comedy came about in the second half and I will agree I would have preferred the film to stay more serious uh, and I do think it gets a little bit too silly at certain times I think it makes up for it for being extremely fun just so much fucking fun and Peter Berg as the lead in the film uh, his acting is a little weak, but I still enjoy watching him, and Peter Berg turned out to be a really good director, but as an actor in the film, his acting is a little weak, but I still really enjoy watching him. The actress who plays his girlfriend uh, in the film is pretty bad, but she's decent in the film. Um, other things in the film, uh, Miss, Mitch Pileggi the best actor in the film, and the ending with him like flying through different TV stations and channels and shows and shit is just a blast to watch with them fighting on like different in different like uh movie settings and television show settings and shit. It's just a blast to watch. I just love it. And just uh, the constant fighting between Mix and Mix uh fucking had to spit it out here. Mitch Pileggi and Peter Berg is just it's just a blast to watch. Uh I just like watching the action in it. And the heavy metal songs in this film are the fucking bomb. The soundtrack to this film is awesome. I love the soundtrack to this film. Uh, we get great songs in this. Uh, just uh, you get some Iggy Pop in this film. I love Iggy Pop. He's a great singer. Uh, and you get some really awesome Iggy Pop in this film. This film, just as a whole, is just a blast to watch. And it's not taking itself entirely seriously, so I don't really mind the comedy. Like when uh Mitch Pileggi is like fucking like I guess selling his soul or making the deal with like the devil who comes out looking like a big thing of like rock and roll style Earl Smith lips. It's like a the tele the the TV devil or something like that. It's just, you can tell Wes Craven had a really, like, a sense of humor about this film and that this film is meant to be a slight social commentary also on television in general. Um, and just for what it is, I have a blast with this film, and I still really enjoy watching it today. And for those reasons, it'll always be one of my top Wes Craven films. Hello, Clarice. <laughs> it's good to see you again. But, yeah, this is my favorite role for Anthony Hopkins of all time. Uh, this film is made by Anthony Hopkins. This film is not just one of the, once again, not just one of the, in my opinion, one of the best horror films ever made, but this is also one of the best movies ever made. Anthony Hopkins is so great in this movie that you don't, I don't even think, I don't, when I watch it, I don't even realize that he's in the film so little. Uh, but he uh, just has such screen performance that it seems like he's in the film a lot more than what he actually is. This film is terrific, uh, all the way from the, the just the, fucked upness of the killer of Buffalo Bill who skins people and fucking wires their skin. Just all the way from that to uh, just the character of Hannibal Lecter himself. This is a terrific film. Uh, the sequel Hannibal, uh, just to touch upon really quick, uh, I don't care too much for I don't think it's a horrible movie. It's just, uh, just couldn't touch this first film here. Uh, Red Dragon I think is just okay, but I've never seen Manhunter and I hear it's much better. Um, Hannibal Rising I don't remember anything about. But as far as this first film goes right here, this is a terrific film. I highly recommend this film to Anthony Hopkins fans, even though I'm sure they've all seen it already, and horror movie fans, once again. Uh, but if you're watching this video, once again, you've seen this movie probably a million times, just like I have. But uh, I love this film. I could never get enough of this film. Just all the way down from Anthony Hopkins acting to like just the way he looks. Like he can just do looks on camera that just make his character so interesting. For he's he's in the film not that much, but he's like so fucking good that uh he just like he steals the entire film. That's how good he is. Um, and just like he gets well, he does get single handedly the greatest line in the film. I don't even think I want to repeat it, but I ate his liver with some fava beans. <laughs> just that uh, just that whole entire line. Uh, it's just uh, terrific. I don't even I don't even want to try to do it in an Anthony Hopkins type style because there's no way I can do it justice. But this film should be seen for his performance alone. Just his performance alone makes this entire film worth seeing. Not to say the other actors are bad, uh, because they they all do fine. They're all great. Uh, Jodie Foster is is great in the film. I like Jodie Foster as an actress. 
and I think she does fine in the film. This film is a high, highly recommended by me. Uh, I think everyone who's a horror fan should definitely give this film at least one watch. Whether you like it or not, I think every fan or, uh, or uh, of horror should give this film at least one watch. This is just a terrific film, uh, and it is really scary. And even though, the, once again, just a testament to Anthony Hopkins' amazing acting, even though the plot doesn't even like really revolve around his character, his character uh, is just written so well. Uh, and also just a testament for the how good the film is and the script. His character is written so well, and his scenes are directed so well, and he just acts them so well that uh, you can see why they would want to center uh, the, uh, the sequel, Hannibal, directly on his character. But this film right here will always be the best in the franchise. Uh, I love this film. Uh, it's so good. I could even watch it right now right after I'm, right after I'm done with this video. Uh, I'm almost done with my 69 favorite horror films. Uh, there will be one more video after this one just to cap everything off. But it's been a fun ride, if not a tiresome one. And I'm just glad to end this video right here with one of the best uh, horror films ever made, in my opinion.